uh, after the event in a follow up email to you all so that you can then view it whenever you want and also share with whoever you want. Um, so we'll just move over then and have a look at today's agenda. So we'll be joined by a number of experts from across the industry. And in just a moment, I'll hand over to uh, Dan Sanford, Head of Place uh, Management at the uh, Fitzrovia Partnership, and Dan will say a few words to help open the session. Um, we'll then head over to Kate Fenton at Cross River Partnership. Uh, Kate's uh, Project Manager uh, for the Clean Air Villages Project. And she'll be talking about the benefits of delivery consolidation and some of the project's tools that may be of use to you all. Um, and then after Kate, we'll be joined by Laura uh, Wilkins, the account manager at First Mile. And Laura will be talking about uh, becoming a zero waste business, helping businesses recycle everything. Like I mentioned, there will be an opportunity for you to ask your questions. Um, and we'll do this after Laura's talk. Uh, and then before wrapping up the session at 11.45, uh, I'll hand over to the Petrovia Partnership Savings Project Manager, uh, uh, Omar uh, Charlemagne. Um, and yes, that's that's today's agenda. I would like to mention that Star Friedman, uh, project officer at Crossroad Partnership, uh, who is leading on this particular clean air village, uh, the Fitzrovia Partnership area. Star will be moderating the chat facility, uh, posting relevant links and resources throughout all of the talks. Um, if you are not familiar with uh, Microsoft Teams, uh, just click the button uh, at the top of your screens. Uh, so it's next to the little hand function, uh, the next icon to the left of the hand function to open up the chat function. Uh, so if you could now just post your names and where you're from within the chat, that would be brilliant so we, so we know who's here. So without further ado then, let's make a start with today's session. I'd now like to pass over uh, to Dan Sanford uh, from, from the Fitzrovia Partnership uh, to provide you with a little more context to today's session. Over to you, Dan. Thank you, Thomas. Uh, good morning, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Um, as Thomas said, I'm Dan Sanford. I'm the Head of Place Management at the Fitzrovia Partnership. Um, we're delighted to be working with our partners at Cross River Partnership on this year's Clean Air Villages project. Uh, Clean Air Villages 3, or as, as you'll probably know, is a DEFRA funded project um, aims to improve the air quality in 16 different London villages. Uh, where both air pollution and population density levels are high. Fitzrovia obviously fits into this category. Um, I think where this project uh, differs to previous successful and uh, award-winning projects is um, that, uh, to the best of my knowledge, and I'm sure Kate's team at, at uh, CRP will be able to confirm this, is that uh, it's the first time that these projects have been delivered in the, in the face of a global pandemic. Uh, so um, I think one of the, the biggest challenges for, for Cross River Partnership at the beginning was to uh, uh, to talk to DEFRA uh, and, and, and enable some flexibility in this year's projects really to uh, um, adapt it really to, to be the most used to businesses and communities during COVID-19. Um, for the past year, I've had the pleasure of sitting on the board at Cross River Partnership, um, and I also sit on the, uh, the steering group for the wider uh, Clean Air Villages project. Um, I'm confident that uh, the Fitzrovia Partnership, our members, we have access here to a highly experienced team of air quality specialists um, and solutions driven business and community minded experts in the field. Um, as Thomas said, we've got Kate and staff on the call with us today um, and um, obviously um, colleagues from First Mile and, and Omar, so we'll, uh, they'll be talking a bit, uh, talking a bit uh, shortly. Um, the main goal is to develop uh, localised low emissions logistic solutions um, and, and in Fitzrovia specifically we're looking at reducing surface transport. Um, and promoting the use of sustainable transport alternatives. We also aim to facilitate behaviour change by encouraging individuals in Fitzrovia to adopt a neighbourhood based intervention approach to increase the use of active travel methods um, and reduce the number of car journeys, reduce the number of personal deliveries to work in Fitzrovia, but also individuals to, you know, to reduce the number of deliveries at home as well. Um, in order to stimulate this, uh, the Fitzrovia Partnership are delighted to be able to offer a, a business, a trial of our uh, Christiana cargo bike, which you can see on the screen there. Um, um, we're going to offer this up free of charge uh, uh, for a minimum period of six months. Um, this offer is open to any bid member or local Fitzrovia business 
Um, and you guys on the call today are the first to hear about this exclusive offer. So um, uh, you heard it here first. Um, if you're interested in finding out more, please do get in touch with me at the end uh, or a member of the CRP team um, and we can explore the details. The only real ask from this, from this offer is that we can work with you during the trial because um, what we'd really like to do is develop some case studies and monitor the progress so we can uh, um, support further initiatives like this in the future. Um, finally, before I hand over to the CRP team, um, some of you on the call might be aware during the first wave of the pandemic and the lockdown, um, the Fitzrovia partnership created what we call our three R's document, uh, reactivate, recover, revive. Um, this started life as a downloadable business resource designed to support um, business through the various phases of uh, the pandemic, um, you know, the, the various challenges that businesses face through the crisis phase, having to reactivate their businesses, having to recover. Importantly, also transformation and revival. So um, it's designed to support all workplaces. Um, it, it prepares re workplaces to reactivate, creating safe and healthy plans. Uh, for space and staff. Um, it puts well-being front and centre of all decision making and identifies the key stakeholders and engagement to inform new workplace strategies. Um, we've ensured throughout the pandemic that each version of the document contains all the salient information from the government updated as and when guidance is issued. So for example, COVID secure guidelines, uh, tiered restrictions and of course, as we're all experiencing now for a second time, uh, national restrictions. Um, as you can imagine, the information has been fast flowing for the best part of this year. Uh, the documents become quite large. Um, so I'm pleased to let you know today that we've uh, develop a, developed a dedicated website um, to contain all of this information, which would be far easier to navigate uh, for businesses and individuals who are at different stages of the cycles that we find ourselves in um, as this pandemic evolves and the, rest and the restrictions evolve. Um, so um, I think colleagues from on the call are going to post a link to the uh, to the website in the chat shortly. Um, over the coming week, weeks and months, uh, and quite importantly, we're going to continue to update the, the recover sections with government guidance and best practice learned from uh, representative business and trade and industry bodies. Um, but importantly, we're going to be further developing the revive section of the guidance and posting all of our work from the Clean Air Villages project and our other work um, to support Fitzrovia businesses. Um, we've all heard this term before. Um, uh, here's a pound in the pot for this one, build back better. But uh, it's true, there's no better time for us to build back better. Um, and, and now's the opportunity really for us to build back greener, I feel. Um, and, and lots of you would have heard about sort of greed recovery and build back greener as well. So. Um, but it is an opportunity now to, to hit reset on all of our sustainable working practices. Um, we're here to learn from you, work with your business to shape our member services as a bid, and we would then support all of our Fitzrovia businesses and communities. So, um, so all that remains for me is to say thanks again for joining us today. Um, I'm happy to take any questions during the course of the call and at the end. Um, but on that note, I'll hand back over to Thomas. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Dan. Um, what we'll do now then is we'll head over to Kate Fenton, uh, Project Manager for the Clean Air Villages Programme. Um, over to you, Kate. Thanks, Thomas. Thanks, Dan. Morning, everybody. Um, I'd just like to first of all confirm, like Dan said, this is the first time we have delivered a project during a pandemic. That's definitely for sure. Hopefully it will be the last time, um, but obviously everybody is adapting. So just a little bit about Cross River Partnership first. So we are a public private partnership. We were set up more than 25 years ago to project manage um, the delivery of the Millennium Bridge. And since then, we have been working on projects across London that make the city a nicer place to live, work and visit. So we are made up of um, a partnership of nine local authorities, 17 business improvement districts and six strategic agencies, which includes Greater London Authority and Transport for London. So just moving on. So I know Dan has told you a little bit about Clean Air Villages. 
Um, but it's important to point out, I think, from the start that um, air quality is an issue and we know that it's um, gaining increasing media attention. But people living in London are exposed to illegal levels of toxic air and this can seriously impact on health and life expectancy, which is why there are projects out there that are working to improve air quality. So this DEFRA funded central government project um, is from their air quality fund and we are working with 12 local authorities and four business improvement districts, one of which is of course Fitzrovia Partnership. And um, the idea is that we work in pollution hotspots, areas where there's high levels of pollution and high footfall. And um, our aim is to reduce congestion and pollution by working with businesses, communities and hospitals. And we'll, we're doing this through education, interventions, pilots and by offering solutions. So these are just the 16 villages that we're working in and we call the project villages because Fitzrovia, as you can see, that area is totally different in terms of the business makeup from, say, Tooting High Street. So there needs to be a tailored approach and we ask partners to choose the strand that they work, they want us to work on. So with Fitzrovia, it was, was of course, businesses. So there's also synergy that results from working on um, the cross, cross borough activities. An additional work that we do involves um, electric vehicle trials, uh, clean air walking routes, um, more on that to follow. We're doing a little bit of traffic monitoring work at the moment as well. We also have um, a directory of businesses that deliver using zero and ultra low emission vehicles, but more to follow on that as well. Um, we're also running a series of live shares at the moment that bring in speakers from um, all, all over the world talking about air quality. And I'm really sorry about that background noise. Um, <laughs> anyway, so. As you can see, this map shows the bid area of focus and um, Starve, who you can see is posting messages in the chat, is has already been in touch with some of the businesses in Fitzrovia to offer advice and guidance um, about air quality and what your business can do. Um, and to offer, I'm really sorry about the background noise. <laughs> so um, various things that we have worked on um, in other areas of the project is offering advice on, on businesses wanting to switch electric to, elect to an electric vehicle and we actually currently have some telematics dongles that are free and available for businesses to use or for your suppliers so if you own your own vehicle or if you if you want to offer one to any of your suppliers if they're thinking of switching to an electric vehicle um, then you need to let us know today or tomorrow because tomorrow is actually the deadline so these dongles you attach to your vehicle it monitors your average usage and will actually analyse that data and tell you whether um, there is an electric vehicle on the market that suits your business needs. So do get in touch with us or post a message in the chat if you're interested in that. We're also running various cargo bike schemes. So I know that Dan has been talking about the cargo bike that you have available in Fitzrovia now, which is really, really exciting. Um, and these zero emission vehicles offer a fast and environmentally friendly way of delivering items to stock, items to customers or moving and collecting stock. And we're finding that there's increased take up of this during the pandemic and during lockdown when businesses are having to adapt their operations. So they're really, really valuable um, at this point in time. So we have a little bit of an icebreaker poll just to in involve everybody a little bit. So before I just explain that, I just wanted to highlight that um, as part of the Clean Air Villages project last year, we worked with Lambeth Council and Brixton Bid and Zipcar to install a shared electric van that was actually free for businesses to use for a year. Um, and the idea of that was that it was a behaviour change project that was encouraging um, and enabling businesses <clears throat> to have a go at using electric vehicles, understanding how to charge it, and also to take part in a shared vehicle scheme. The idea being to reduce congestion and pollution. So this could be something that we could explore in Fitzrovia. Um, and like I, I've already pointed out about the various um, electric vehicle information that we can share with you. So I just want to invite you all to post in the message chat a sort of A, B, C or D or a mixture of all of them about whether you would be interested in using an electric vehicle. So put A if you'd be interested in purchasing or leasing a vehicle of your own. B if you'd be interested in a shared electric van scheme like the one I spoke about in Brixton. Um, C if you'd be interested in finding out about what options or financing options exist for EVs. And D if you're just not interested, which is absolutely fine. We understand it's not relevant for all businesses. Um, I'll just give you a moment or two to post in the chat. Please do go for it. Um, there is a messaging icon up at the top of Teams if you're not familiar, and that will bring up the messaging chat on the right hand side.
I'll just give you a couple more moments to do that and maybe just carry on um, filling that in while I continue because um, we do have a lot to get through. But thank you to those who are posting already. Ah, and um, C, D. OK, a little bit of variety there. Um, and if there is interest in electric vehicle, like I said, it's something that we can look into. So do, do keep posting there. That's really, really helpful. Thank you very much. So just on to consolidation. So consolidating your deliveries with your neighbours saves your business money and results in reduced vehicle movements in your area. So this means reduced pollution and congestion. And it's actually been shown that this can increase footfall and therefore increase sales. Um, there is more to follow on consolidation, so I won't go into it in detail. Um, but I just wanted to share with you this case study from Brixton as well. So this it was a, a group of local butchers, 14 butchers that actually got together and realised that they were all paying kind of different prices for what was essentially the same product. Um, and after conversations, they came to an agreement. So they reduced their number of suppliers from 11 to 5. This, re this resulted in a reduced number of vans coming to the area. And they actually gained from an 8 to 10% saving in costs, which is quite significant over the long term. And of course, there were also emission savings. So it's just to show you what's possible um, if you work with your, your business community. So like I mentioned earlier, we also have the Clean Air Villages directory. So this is a free online website which lists businesses and suppliers who deliver using zero and ultra low emission methods. So cargo bikes, electric vehicles, by foot, etc. Um, you also have a dedicated page for Fitzrovia. Um, if you're wanting to order bread, champagne, stationery, or to find out about cargo bike services, there's all sorts on there. Do take a look, um, you know, and maybe ask yourself as a business, would you consider switching to a supplier if it resulted in cleaner local air? Obviously, you would still need it to be competitive in terms of cost and price. Um, also, if you think you're eligible to be on this directory, um, it's free to be listed, do let us know. Or if there's a local business um, that you think would also be eligible to be on, on this, do shout as well. So we also have a tool called the Deliver Best tool, which is also free and online. Um, so this gives a business recommendations as to what you can do to save time and money whilst also improving air quality. It takes less than two minutes to fill in your name, your business, your email, your location, etc. And it gives you outputs and recommendations. So, for example, it might talk about retiming outside of peak. If you get your deliveries during 7 and 10 a.m., that's the busiest time for deliveries, the worst time for pollution. So if you, do you need it to arrive at that time is a good question to ask. Can you talk to your suppliers about delivering outside of these hours, maybe even overnight, if that's possible? Um, so th there may also be outputs in terms of streamlining your deliveries, so ordering in bulk, reducing the number of deliveries and the number of suppliers. I think we tend to say that it's not rocket science. Um, a good example is the Roundhouse in Camden, who actually, they realised that they were getting six deliveries a week of alcohol and drinks, um, and they had some space, so they reduced their deliveries by 50% and got deliveries three times a week instead. Um, sometimes it just takes stepping back and looking at your operations in order to come up with um, ideas for change. Um, we will share all these links as well afterwards. I know Starve is sharing them in the chat as well. So we also have a tool called the Clean Air Root Finder. So this is another free tool. Um, so if you're walking from a route or cycling from route that's A to B, there might be a route that is better for your health in terms of exposure to pollutants. So it's worth having a play around with this. Um, and we're also going to be de developing clean air walking routes um, for the area, which we will share with you at a later date. And there are also some that um, Fitzrovia have already worked on, and we'll also share links to those as well. So just a little bit on personal deliveries. So I know that we've seen a huge shift since COVID as so many people are moving online, probably more than ever before. Uh, but this is just to highlight to any employer, any employer that has employees that receive personal deliveries to work, um, obviously depending on volume, but this actually is a cost for your business. It takes up time, it's a resource, um, and this can have a negative impact on congestion and pollution in your area. So many people who receive personal deliveries to their place of work in central London then jump on a train and go home further out of London. So it doesn't seem that logical. So our click and collect tool shows collection hubs for where um, your area of where you live or where you work. And what this does is it solves the issue to be out when you um, have ordered a parcel. It can go to a click and collect location and then you can pick it up at your own convenience and ideally closer to where you live rather than where you work. Perhaps this is something to think about um, once we return to something resembling normality after COVID. Fingers crossed soon. 
So finally, um, all the tools and resources that I've highlighted can be found on our website and all the links will be sent out by Fitzrovia Partnership as well. Our contact details will be there um, too for you. We'd love to hear from you. Um, I mean, in summary, we are all both on a personal and professional level. We all have a role to play in reducing congestion and pollution. So please don't think that your actions can't make a difference. It's our collective action which will lead to improved air quality. Thank you. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Kate, <coughs> for providing such a thorough outline there of the project and a lot of the uh, different tools that are available to you as businesses. Um, what we'll do now then, um, we'll head over to uh, Laura Wilkins, account manager at First Mile, to discuss a little more about becoming a zero waste business. Call everything. Um, over to you, Laura. Thank you, Thomas. And um, hi, everyone. Uh, nice to, to meet you all. Um, as Thomas said, I am from First Mile. Um, I'm one of the account managers on our team there, and I'm going to be talking to you today about um, what we do as a business. Um, and how we work with the Fitzrovia partnership and then some of the benefits that we offer to the BIDS members. So to start, um, who are we? Um, so we're a recycling business um, that is slightly different to um, some of the other kind of waste management companies out there in that um, we place the environment very much at the core of what we do. Um, so we have two main missions. The first one is to make recycling as easy as possible for businesses. And the second is to um, help businesses be as sustainable as possible. So the ways that we do this is um, we actually offer over 25 different recycling streams, which is which is a lot more than um, any other business um, recycling business across London. In doing this, it just allows us to um, offer businesses the greatest opportunity to recycle as much as possible. Um, we do believe in a world where everything can be recycled. We very much um, follow kind of the, the rules of the waste hierarchy in that we want to make sure that we kind of look at reusing and recycling before um, waste disposal. So whilst we've got over 25 different um, recycling streams, we also want to make sure that the are as um, sustainable as possible um, and in doing that, we work very, very closely with um, partners as close to London as possible because we want to be minimising our um, emissions. So we work with as many partners as possible to really um, unravel and um, work with the very best end destinations as possible. Um, we're always zero to landfill, so we um, have a vigorous process where we um, work through our supply chain, making sure that um, absolutely nothing goes to zero, um, nothing goes to landfill. We have um, an ultra green fleet, which includes um, zero emissions deliveries. So as um, we've just been talking a lot about um, emissions and deliveries across um, across Fitzrovia, um, you can be assured that everything that is being delivered from First Mile is in one of our zero emissions um, electric vehicles. And on the collections front, um, whilst it's not quite as easy to offer um, zero emissions collections, we do have the very best vehicles possible. They're all Euro 6 less compliant um, and then we offer collections on a daily basis um, 365 days of the year making it kind of feeding into that and um, making things easy for businesses piece. So how do we help businesses become greener? As I say this is really at the core of what we do. We want to collect people's waste but we really want to be kind of encouraging them to do the right things with the materials that they that they produce. Um, so we work with businesses to help them choose the right services for them. I mentioned we've got over 25 different recycling streams, which means that we can kind of create uh, bespoke packages for businesses. So whether you're a you're a bar and you kind of produce a lot of glass, we'll set you up with glass collections. If you're a coffee shop and you produce a lot of coffee waste, then we'll have a we'll, we'll set up a coffee waste collection for you. Um, and and as I say, there's a multitude of different streams. So flexi plastics is one that we've introduced um, kind of over the last two years, which has been been really valuable for a lot of the retailers that we work with. Um, lots of kind of garments come in in poly bags. So we we've carried out waste audits across a lot of our businesses that we work retailers that we work with, and discovered that actually sometimes up to fifty percent of their waste is made up of poly bags. So we've created a product to enable us to capture that and make sure that it is recycled rather than going to be incinerated. 
Um, so as I say, we, we work with individual businesses, which is a real benefit of working with First Mile. We kind of we, sh we make sure that and we invest in putting the time in with businesses to make sure that we can work with them on an individual basis to try and push their recycling rate. Um, up as much as possible and um, so there's some stats in there for you on on average across london the recycle recycling rates across businesses are about is about 34 percent which i'm sure most of you would agree isn't isn't really where we want to be um but across the fixerovia partnership we're um we're in a really good point where we're at 65 percent and recycling rate at the moment definitely room for us to do to do more but 65 percent as you can see against the london average is is really something to be proud of um, to help businesses kind of keep um, keep track of how they're doing. We offer monthly reporting, which is available on our online portal, really easy to use system. Um, every business will get a login to it. They can go on there, track their, not only track their orders, their collection times, um, they can look at compliance documents, but they can also view that monthly recycling report, um, which kind of gives them lots of stats on how they're doing in terms of recycling so they can kind of compare month on month, year on year. And um, it actually offers a breakdown of different materials as well. So you can see um, how you're doing across different streams. Um, and as Hannah, who would normally be doing this pr presentation, but unfortunately she couldn't make it today. Um, Hannah in that photo there is with one of um, the businesses that we work with displaying the very lovely um, recycling certificate that we send out to business on, an, um, on a yearly basis. So everyone can kind of sing about how well they're doing, put it up on the up, up in the window, up on the um, notice boards. So yeah, it, it kind of it kind of um, congratulates businesses at the end of the year on how well they're doing. So then the benefits um, for the Fitzrovia partnership members. Um, I don't know if, if you're aware, but as being part of the um, bid, you then are um, entitled to a number of free recycling sacks. Dependent on the size of your business, um, you have this allocation of free recycling sacks that you can um, that you can be making the most of. Again, it, it kind of just offers an incentive for businesses to be doing the right things, so to be to be recycling as much as possible. Um, as well as the discount um, as well as the free sacks rather we um, provide really good discounts um, to businesses within the partnership um, that's across all of our services so any of our streams coffee glass um, any of the recycling streams that you can all be taking advantage of so due to those due to those discounts and those free sacks we've helped deliver um, great savings across the partnership so as you can see in September um, alone, there was um, over £3,000 saving um, across businesses in the partnership. That's that's almost £45,000 across the year. So as you can agree, that's, that's quite a considerable saving. So not only are we helping to helping you to increase your recycling rate and kind of be as sustainable as possible but we are helping to deliver savings on top of that, which makes which makes doing the right thing even even easier. So as well as um, benefits in terms of costs and discounting, there's lots of additional things that we offer to um, members. So as I say, we do we do really invest and make sure that we've got the time to work with individual businesses to kind of give them the right guidance on what they're doing with their waste. So we've got um, multiple teams across the business who are there to support on this. Um, Hannah, who is normally the bid representative, um, is one of those. And then we've got our customer service team as well, who are always on hand to kind of offer bespoke advice on, on what individuals should be doing um, with their waste management. Um, as well as that, we run free week, free recycling workshops. You, again, Hannah loves a photo and she's um, demonstrated in the photo there um, one of our recycling workshops. So this provides an opportunity for businesses to um, to engage with us on, on recycling, whether it's businesses and or whether it's cleaners within the businesses whether it's customers and um, it's really it's really up to you in terms of how you want to position it but we um yeah we'll bring along one of our boards we'll bring a lot of, along leaflets and information and be on hand to answer uh, answer any questions and provide people with as much information as possible on how to do um on, on how to do the right thing in terms of increasing your recycling rates um we also offer free um tours of our sanctuary which is 
talk a little bit about our sanctuary. It's actually a um, pre-sorting facility, which is one of the things that really helps us um, drive up um, our customers' recycling rates. So it's it's located in North Acton, um, and it's as the, as the photo kind of demonstrates, it is very much that we have that we have a team of people on the picking line. So our sacks are all taken back to the sanctuary, opened up, and any um, any general waste sacks that that kind of go along the conveyor belt, the guys open up the sacks, and if there's recycling in there, so if there's plastic bottles, paper, anything that's ended up in a general waste sack, and it, and it's often the case, um, then that is actually pulled out, retrieved, and sent to be recycled rather than general waste. So it allows us to save a lot of recycling that would have that would have otherwise been missed. Um, and on the flip of that if we've got um, recycling sacks that are actually heavily contaminated because this is an issue that we're often that we're often facing and we've got several innovations in place to try and help us work with businesses to use recycling services correctly um, if there's recycling sacks along the conveyor belt that look heavily contaminated with food which is often one of the main contaminants we would then retrieve that and that would end up going to general waste but it, it means that we can help drive down costs because we're not we're not passing on contamination charges to businesses so hopefully that gives you all a bit of an overview of uh, what First Mile do, how we're here to help across the partnership and um, how we can help drive down costs as well as push up your recycle rate and encourage you all to be um, a more sustainable business. Um, thank you. I'll pass you over to Tom. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Laura. It's great to hear a little bit more about the work you're doing at First Mile. Um, so what we will do now, um, open up the floor to uh, just for, well, for discussion. So if you've got any questions, do post them in the chat, but also do raise your uh, the raise to hand function, which is the little hand at the top of your screens in the bar. Hopefully you can all see that. So if you do have questions, raise your hand. Uh, but what we will do before we go ahead to do that is we'll do a little poll. Um, so the poll is in which ways would your business be interested in using a cargo bike? So is it A, we'd be interested in purchasing or leasing a cargo bike of our own. B, we'd be interested in hiring a cargo bike service for our deliveries. C, we'd be interested in finding out more about cargo bike options in our area. Or D, we're not interested in using cargo bike at all, which is absolutely fine. Um, so do post your answers into the chat uh, function. Uh, now I'll give a few, few minutes for that. Um, and it'd be good to hear the reasons as to why maybe you're um you're choosing those particular options. I don't know whether um anyone wants to raise their hand. I won't put anyone on the spot, but if anyone wants to raise their hand, maybe expand a little as to why why they've chosen that option, that would be Brill. Um but if not, we can we can start the QA session. So what we can do, um, so if you and if you've got any questions, and I will uh, invite you to speak uh, and ask the questions to the speakers. But what we can now do, though, is if I get all the speakers to put their cameras back on, um, hopefully that won't destroy our our network connection. Brilliant. OK, then. So as a little bit of a starter question then for all the speakers. Um, if a business is interested in delivery or waste consolidation, what would the first steps be? Um, maybe if we start with uh, Kate, would you be happy to maybe expand on that first? Yeah, sure. If you're interested in consolidation, I mean, as a Fitzrovia business, if you're interested in waste, then um, I guess you'd better get in touch with First Mile and the Fitzrovia partnership. Um, if you're interested in other forms of consolidation, while CRP is working in, on this project in your area, do get in touch with us. Um, and if it links in with anything that Fitzrovia are already doing, then we can help with that. And if not, we can we can get businesses together to start a conversation and try and make something happen. That's what we're here for. So do get in touch. But it's it's just contextual, depends on, on what you want to discuss. Oh, Thanks. Thomas, you muted. Thank you, Kate. <laughs> no, thanks, Kate, for that uh, answer. I don't know whether Dan or Laura, you um want to add anything 
Yeah, I just just very thank you, Thomas. Just very and thank you, Kate, as well. Just to elaborate on what Kate was saying, please do get in touch with the read if we can uh, if we can help you further. Um, my colleague Omar is on the call at the moment, and he's um, he's going to be just uh, doing a, a, a wrapping up for us in a minute to talk about how, how other other areas of savings and other ways that we can consolidate freight through office supplies and, and other things. So I won't steal Omar's thunder, I'll let him talk. Uh, and it might be an opportunity to bring Omar in actually, Thomas, uh, uh, and um, and talk about other ways we can we can save uh, money for business. Absolutely, do join us Omar if you'd like to. <laughs> Hi guys, how are you? Um, so I'll just quickly um, wrap up. I just wanted to add uh, really that we are constantly working with businesses to assist uh, with the reduction of cost um, using jump, jump procurement and freight consolidation with the right wider goal of improving air quality and the environment. Um, working with CRP, the partnership has decided to offer a, a limited service for some businesses as well, because I know not all businesses here are members, um, through kind of like an, an affiliate membership where we can offer service, uh, like a limited service um, from for example, the waste scheme with First Mile, where we can help businesses save up to 30% on sacks. And then by joining our voluntary membership, uh, you could then save more money through our free allocation. Um, we also do work with DMG um, on office supplies. Uh, office supplies are things like stationery, um, print and packaging, and also catering. So, folks, a bit dry. And also there are free uh, green options for electricity and gas as well um, through one of our preferred suppliers. Um, businesses that sign up to the voluntary membership will receive a full saving service. Um, and that will include things like free training, merchant fees, handyman and maintenance services. Um, and my details will be in the slide that I have, which um, is just on top. Um, yeah, so thanks very much, guys, uh, and I look forward to hearing from you. Thank you for that, Omar. Just to build on that as well, I mean, the, the other thing to uh, to mention there is is that, um, you know, through our joint procurement, you know, we, we offer savings, you know, monetary savings, but it's also savings in time for business. So you can yes. you can channel your your um, you know your, your your request through the bids. Um, we've done the due diligence on these companies, so we we know that uh, you know we know their pricing schedules. We also know the the, the the service levels that they've signed up to with us in the bids. Um, you know we've entered into contracts with all of them as well. So um, and and they're measured through KPIs um, on a monthly basis as well. And as um, as Laura said, you know and and our other supply chain partners also. Uh, report into us on a monthly basis with the statistics of where savings have been made and also things like as Laura said with recycling um, you know the actual recycling headline numbers actually which are, which are really really good I have to say so um, um, you know it's not just monetary savings it's 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 um, savings in management time um, and uh, you know the due diligence is done with these companies as well so um, yeah you know just Send it, fire it all over to us, and we can we can deal with it for you. That's the the, the main aim of this. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Omar and Dan. Um, apologies, I probably should have moved the slide forward there for you at that at that point. Um, but do let me know if there's anything else you'd like to to add to this slide at all. Um, so yeah. So if you do have any questions, do let us know. We've got about five minutes left um, for time. Uh, raise your hand, like I mentioned, uh, and yes, we'll be able to ask your questions to the panel. Um, but maybe then just if we, uh, well, if I could ask then, so all of these services mentioned in the presentations, um, I'm assuming are ULES compliant. Um, how can a business ensure that they're using ULES compliant services? Um, I don't know whether, who, who would like to oh, uh, ask this question first? Maybe Laura, would you be, would you be happy to? Yeah, um, I mean, from a from a um, from a waste point of view, um, as I mentioned, all of our vehicles are ULES compliant. Um, so yeah, I guess it would it, it's a case of making sure that those checks checks are done um, throughout kind of the supply chain across um, businesses that are being used um, for deliveries and collections across the partnership. Um, 
EULA should be in place and, and businesses should be working towards ensuring that they are um, compliant with the EULA's regulations. Um, first mile, first mile R, and we were very much ahead of the of the deadline date for it. It was something that we've been long working towards um, anyway. Um, it, it's very difficult as a waste business. We do have to have vehicles on the road. Um, but as an environmental business, we want to be making sure that we're having the very, the very smallest impact um, on the environment. Um, so a big part of that is obviously looking into um, our um, our vehicles and emissions and making sure that we can minimise where we can. So we see ULEZ as a, as, a, as a really, really great big move um, across London and one that we were, that we'd been long hoping for. Um, so yeah, it, ensuring that the partners that you are working with um, are kind of in line with that um, is, is definitely key. Thank you, Lord. Just to echo that as well with uh, with our other um, uh, supply chain partners as well on the savings programme, just to give you an example, um, taking one um, example is our office supplier. Um, you know, they, we, we've ensured that they're utilising uh, so it's an absolute bare minimum you less compliant vehicles um, but also you know part of our challenges and, and part of our, our ask of those businesses is, is they're working towards sustainable transport alternatives so um, our office current office supplier is actually um, the the, uh, the dongle that um, uh, Kate talked about in her presentation so they're actually monitoring uh, they, they're taking part in that scheme at the moment and that's going to help inform um, I mean, I think this year they're talking about looking at a zero emissions vehicle um, and, uh, and moving towards that. And they, they've made that commitment with us and uh, uh, we'll be monitoring that progress as it goes forward. Can I just add on to that as well? So I think that um, I think it's really important when it comes to procurement to think about this. So when you speak to suppliers and you're choosing suppliers to ask them not only about whether their, their vehicles are ULES compliant, but even to take it one step further and ask them what their long term plan is when it comes to switching to to vehicles that are ultra low or zero emission we know that all vehicles can't be right now but it's good to know what their strategy is for the future because i think the more that you plant the seed in the mind of a supplier's in in a supplier's mind about the fact that your thick businesses are thinking about this and it's it becomes part of the process more businesses that own vehicles will be realizing that they need to make some steps in, in going going in that direction because there are arguments to say that the ULES actually doesn't go far enough and it also doesn't solve the congestion problem if we replaced every vehicle um, in central London with an electric one there's still going to be a congestion problem so it's about consolidation and and thinking about the future strategy brilliant thank you very much everyone I know we've got two minutes left so I think what we can do is as a quick kind of fire final question, 30, 30 seconds maybe each for each uh, speaker. Uh, so if a, if a business is truly limited in time and funds, what one change could a business prioritise that would provide them with their local, uh, that would provide them and their local area with the most benefits? So 30 seconds each, if we go Kate, Laura, Dan, and Omar, if you'd like to mes mention anything as well, you're more than welcome to. Sure. OK, so Thomas, you said for me to go first. So I think if you were only to do one thing as a business, I think potentially just reducing the number of deliveries that you receive can have a huge impact. That's what I'd say. And if I could add one more thing, I'd maybe just say start the conversation with your neighbours and see what they're doing and really make air quality something that, that is a topic to be talked about and discussed. Thanks. Sorry, what does it mean next? Um, from a waste point of view, um, it can often be a bit overwhelming because um, there's a lot. I talk about all of these different options that we have um, to hand, um, but that that can be a bit overwhelming. So for businesses to like really just really look at the materials that they're producing, um, establish which which materials it is that they're, they're currently not recycling and they could be and, and they could be capturing elsewhere. And even if it is just to focus on on, on one additional um, recycling stream to be using and um, food is a is a perfect example. Any businesses that do produce food um, it will be within legislation at some point over the coming years that businesses do have to recycle food. So that's a really easy one to to capture and um, to to try and help businesses do their part um, and it and it does mean that you'll be ahead of legislation. 
Thank you, Laura. Um, from my side, uh, my advice is, is talk to us at the Fitzrovia Partnership. I mean, um, as we said, um, we've done a lot of the hard work with, with our, our supply consolidation scheme. You know, when we talk about things like office supplies, you know, traditionally it, it, people think paper, pens, printed materials, that kind of thing. Um, more than that, and you know, in, in the midst of a, a global pandemic, things like janitorial supplies, um, you know, we, you could source them through, you know, it, it, really think about what, what, what you need in your office and then talk to us about whether we can, we can obtain that through our, through our supply chain partners. And as I've said, we've done the due diligence on these companies and saves you the time on, on, on doing that. But do, do talk to us. And, and uh, if you have any complex issues, talk to us about those. We'll, we'll, try, and find, we'll, we'll try and find a solution for you. Uh, I just want to second that. Just contact us. Um, we try to take all the, the hard work out of your hands. Um, and by working with our suppliers as well, I mean, we're not saying we just want one supplier in the area, but by working with our suppliers, we do reduce the amount of vehicles coming into the area and things like that, um, which is really, really so yeah, just fire us over an email or give us a call. I think our numbers are on these slides somewhere. Um, so and we're, we're, we're always available. Brilliant. Thank you very much, everyone. Some great comments there. Hopefully you can all hear me because my computer has gone slightly, uh, slightly uh, brill. Thumbs up from Dan. That's great. Um, so yeah, thank you everyone uh, for um, attending today's session and thank you to all our speakers as well for providing some really thought provoking uh, presentations. Um, everyone's contact details are on the screen. So we've got Omar from Fitzrovia Partnership, uh, Stav, uh, who is leading on the uh, Fitzrovia Partnership Area Village for the Clean Air Villages program. Uh, her contact details are there as well from Cross River Partnership. And then also Hannah's um, uh, contact details from First Mile are also on your screens as well. So do get in contact uh, with any one of them if you've got any questions moving forward. Uh, I hope that everyone has found this session useful. Um, and yes, big thank you for joining us this morning. Um, and yes, stay safe and goodbye. Thanks. Thanks, Thanks Thomas. Bye. Thanks. Thanks. Bye. Thanks all. Thanks, everyone.